back at it again for Not Many Noble, reading the Bible through in 22 with you. It is August 17th, and that means it is the 229th day that we have been reading the Bible together. It is also National Thrift Shop Day, National Black Cat Appreciation Day, and National Vanilla Custard Day. How about that? How about that? We are in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 5, and Ezekiel may have spoken the following prophecies in September of 592 BC. That's pretty specific, isn't it? Like normally when you're accustomed to dealing with history, it's like in years, eh, 592, yeah, maybe 593, maybe kind of a 591 to 593-ish, somewhere around there, and this is September. September, what day? I wonder. I don't know, but it's very, it, it's, it's uh, they're saying it's pretty accurate. So, okay. All right. We'll go with that. And we're reading five, I think it's five through nine, something like that. So that's, that's, that's where we're reading. Ezekiel five, verse one, you, and in my mind, I read, yo, but I don't think that's what it was. It's, it's you, son of man, take a sharp sword. You shall take it as a barber's razor to yourself and shall cause it to pass over your head and over your beard. Then take balances to weigh and divide the hair. A third part you shall burn in the fire in the middle of the city when the days of the siege are fulfilled. You shall take a third part and strike with the sword around it. A third part you shall scatter to the wind and I will draw out a sword after them. You shall take of it a few number and bind them in the folds of your robe. Of these again you shall take and cast them into the middle of the fire and burn them in the fire. From it a fire will come out into all the house of Israel. The Lord Yahweh says, This is Jerusalem. I have set her in the middle of the nations and countries are around her. She has rebelled against my ordinances and doing wickedness more than the nations and against my statutes more than the countries that are around her. For they have rejected my ordinances and as for my statutes, they have not walked in them. There's almost a, you know, they, you knew you had my statutes. You had my laws. You knew me. You had me and you still rebelled. Whereas these other nations, they didn't have me. They didn't have me. So their evil, I guess, is not as great. Not as great as those who have and leave or, or have and rebel as those who, who didn't know. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, because you are more turbulent than the nations that are around you and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my ordinances, neither have followed the ordinances of the nations that are around you. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I, even I, am against you, and I will execute judgments among you in the sight of the nations. I will do in you that which I have not done, and which I will not do anything like it any more because of all your abominations. Therefore, the fathers will eat the sons within you, and the sons will eat their fathers. I will execute judgment on you, and I will scatter the whole remnant of you to all the winds. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord Yahweh, surely because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your detestable things and with all of your abominations, therefore I will also diminish you. My eye won't spare and I will have no pity. A third part of you will die with the pestilence and they will be consumed with famine within you. A third part will fall by the sword around you. A third part I will scatter to all the winds and will draw out a sword after them. Thus my anger will be accomplished, and I will cause my wrath toward them to rest, and I will be comforted. They will know that I, Yahweh, have spoken in my zeal when I have accomplished my wrath on them. Moreover, I will make you a desolation and a reproach among the nations that are around you in the sight of all that pass by. So it will be a reproach and a taunt, an instruction and an astonishment to the nations that are around you when I execute judgments on you in anger and in wrath, and in wrathful rebukes, I, Yahweh, have spoken it when I send on them the evil arrows of famine that are for destruction, which I will send to destroy you. I will increase the famine on you and will break your staff of bread. I will send on you famine and evil animals and they will bereave you. Pestilence and blood will pass through you. I will bring the sword on you. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. Ezekiel chapter 6. Verse 1, Yahweh's word came to me saying, Son of man, set your face toward the mountains of Israel and prophesy to them and say, You mountains of Israel, 
Hear the word of the Lord Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh says to the mountains and to the hills, to the watercourses and to the valleys, Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword on you, and I will destroy your high places. Your altars will become desolate, and your incense altars will be broken. I will cast down your slain men before your idols. I will lay the dead bodies of the children of Israel before their idols. I will scatter your bones around your idols. In all your dwelling places, the cities will be laid waste, and the high places will be desolate, that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate, and your idols may be broken down and cease, and your incense Incense altars may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. The slain will fall among you, and you will know that I am Yahweh. Yet I will leave a remnant, and that you will have some that escape the sword through the, uh, sword among the nations, when you are scattered through the countries. Those of you that escape will remember me among the nations where they are carried captive, how I have been broken with their lewd heart, which is departed from me, and with their eyes, which play the prostitute after their idols. Then they will loathe themselves in their own sight for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. They will know that I am Yahweh. I have not said in vain that I would do this evil to them. The Lord Yahweh says, strike with your hand and stamp with your foot and say, alas, because of all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they will fall by the sword, by the famine and by the pestilence. He who is far off will die of the pestilence. He who is near will fall by the sword. He who remains and is besieged will die by the famine. Thus I will accomplish my wrath on them. You will know that I am Yahweh when their slain men are among their idols around their altars on every high hill on all the tops of the mountains, under every green tree, and under every thick oak, the places where they offered pleasant aroma to all their idols. I will stretch out my hand on them and make the land desolate and waste from the wilderness toward Dibla throughout all their habitations. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Interesting, right? That I mean, because they set about to put these um, idols in all the high places. They put the, the, these raised up Asherah poles and all kinds of different things, uh, altars towards incense all over the place, all over the place, all the high places where the quote unquote spirits were, where the gods were of the land that could hear them and bless them with good things. Which Yahweh, of course, said not to do. Chapter 7, verse 1. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, You, son of man, the Lord Yahweh says to the land of Israel, An end. The end has come on the four corners of the land. Now the end is on you, and I will send my anger on you, and will judge you according to your ways. I will bring on you all your abominations. My eye will not spare you, neither will I have pity, but I will bring your ways on you, and your abominations will be among you. There we go. Sorry. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh says, an evil, a unique evil. Behold, it comes. An end has come. The end has come. It awakes against you. Behold, it comes. Your doom has come to you, inhabitant of the land. The time has come. The day is near, a day of tumult and not of joyful shouting on the mountains. Now I will shortly pour out my wrath on you and accomplish my anger against you and will judge you according to your ways. I will bring on you all your abominations. My eye won't spare. Neither will I have pity. I will punish you according to your ways. Your abominations will be among you. Then you will know that I, Yahweh, strike. Behold the day. Behold it comes. Your doom has gone out. The rod has blossomed. Pride had budded. Violence has risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them will remain, nor of their multitude, nor of their wealth. There will be nothing of value among them. The time has come. The day draws near. Don't let the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is on all its multitude. For the seller won't return to that which is sold, although they are still alive. For the vision concerns the whole multitude of it. None will return. None will strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet and have made all ready, but no one goes to the battle, for my wrath is on all its multitude. The sword is outside and the pestilence and the famine within. He who is in the field will die by the sword. He who is in the city will be devoured by famine and pestilence. But those of, but those, of those who escape... They will escape and will be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them moaning, everyone in his iniquity. All hands will be feeble and all knees will be weak as water. They will also clothe themselves with sackcloth and a horror will cover them. Shame will be on all faces and baldness on all their heads. They will cast their silver in the streets and their gold will be used as an unclean thing. 
Their silver and their gold won't be able to deliver them in the day of Yahweh's wrath. They won't satisfy their souls or fill their bellies because it has been the stumbling block of their iniquity. Oh man, does that not hit home? Does that not hit home? They won't satisfy their souls or fill their bellies. Man, that's me. That's it. Well, it feels like it. You know, idolatry with the things that are around, the things that I love, the things that I want to be involved in, uh, to the negligence of uh, spiritual things uh, of of the worship of God, you know the worship of of Yahweh, and then the fill their bellies like the the things that you want, right? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, because it has been the stumbling block of their iniquity. Finishing that up, sorry, the verse twenty. As for the beauty of his ornament, he has set as he has set it in majesty, but they made the images of their abominations and their detestable things therein. Therefore. I have made it to them as an unclean thing. I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey and to the wicked of the earth for a plunder, and they will profane it. I will also turn my face from them, and they will profane my secret place. Robbers will enter into it and profane it. Make chains, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Therefore I will bring the worst of the nations, and they will possess their houses. I will also make the pride of the strong to cease. Their holy places will be profaned. Destruction comes. They will seek peace, and there will be none. Mischief will come on mischief, and rumor will be on rumor. They will seek a vision of the prophet, but the law will perish from the priest and counsel from the elders. The king will mourn, and the prince will be clothed with desolation. The hands of the people of the land will be troubled. I will do to them after their way, and according to their own judgments, I will judge them. Then they will know that I am Yahweh." In the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house and the elders of Judah sat before me, the Lord Yahweh's hand fell on me there. Then I saw and behold a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his waist and downward, fire, and from his waist and upward as the appearance of brightness, as it were, glowing metal. He stretched out the form of a hand and took me by a lock of my head, and the Spirit lifted me between earth and the sky and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the gate of the inner court that looks toward the north, where there was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provokes to jealousy. Behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there according to the appearance that I saw in the plain. Then he said to me, Son of man, lift up your eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up my eyes the way toward the north and saw northward of the gate of the altar this image of jealousy in the entry. He said to me, Son of man, do you see what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel commit here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But you will again see yet other great abominations. He brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, behold a hole in the wall. Then he said to me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. When I had dug in the wall, I saw a door. He said to me, Go in and see the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and looked and saw every form of creeping things, abominable animals, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed around on the wall. Seventy men of the elders of the house of Israel stood before them. In the middle of them, Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, stood, every man with his censer in his hand, and the smell of the cloud of incense went up. Then he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in his rooms of imagery? For they say, Yahweh doesn't see us. Yahweh has forsaken the land. He said also to me, you will again see more of the great abominations which they do. And I want to keep going, but this is when, when we sin, this is what we tell ourselves. Yahweh doesn't see us. God doesn't see. God does not know. That's what we tell ourselves. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yahweh's house, which was toward the north, and I saw the women sit there weeping for Tammuz. Then he said to me, Have you seen this, son of man? You will again see yet greater abominations than these. He brought me into the inner court of Yahweh's house, and I, sat, and I saw at the door of Yahweh's temple, between the porch and the altar, there were about twenty-five men with their backs toward Yahweh's temple and their faces toward the east. They were worshiping the sun toward the east. Then he said to me, have you seen this, son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have turned again to provoke me to anger. Behold, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore, I will also deal in wrath. My eye won't spare, neither will I have pity. Though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. Then he cried in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause those who are in charge of the city to draw near, each man with his destroying weapon in his hand. 
Behold, six men came from the way of the upper gate, which lies toward the north, every man with his slaughter weapon in his hand. One man in the middle of them was clothed in linen with a rider's inkhorn by his side. They went in and stood beside the bronze altar. The glory of the God of Israel went up from the cherub, whereupon it was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed in linen, who had the rider's inkhorn by his side. Yahweh said to him, Go through the middle of the city, through the middle of Jerusalem, and set a mark on the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry over all the abominations that are done within it. To the others he said in my hearing, Go through the city after him and strike. Don't let your eye spare, neither have pity. Kill utterly the old man, the young man, the virgin, the little children and women, but don't come near any man on whom is the mark. Begin at the sanctuary. They began at the old men who were before the house. He said to them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go out. They went out and struck in the city while they were killing. And as I was left, I fell on my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord Yahweh, will you destroy all the residue of Israel in your pouring out of your wrath on Jerusalem? Then he said to me, The iniquity of the house of Israel in Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of blood and the city full of perversion. For they say, Yahweh has forsaken the land and Yahweh doesn't see. As for me also, my eye won't spare, neither will I have pity, but I will bring their way on their head. Behold, the man clothed in linen who had the inkhorn by his side reported the matter, saying, I have done as you have commanded me. All right, we are going to pray for Jonathan and Amy Harris. They are with what organization? Operation Mobilization. And they're in Wales. They're missionaries in Wales. They ask for God to continue to give them boldness and wisdom as they regularly proclaim the gospel on the streets in South Wales. So they hit them streets. Praise God for the good street outreach they had with a team from Richmond, Virginia back in June. Various outreaches in the multicultural community of Grangetown, Cardiff with Grace Church. Make Lunch, a community uh, service project offering free meals to disadvantaged families. Their gospel efforts through various means to help people genuinely come to salvation in Christ. All right, let us pray. Father, thank you for keeping this for us in Ezekiel and give us wisdom to understand it. A lot of figurative language, a lot of stuff we don't know. Just don't know exactly. But the principles maybe are there that you set your mark on those uh, whom you will spare. And we pray that you would have mercy on us and that you would set your mark upon us and that you would conform us to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ and that you would please bless Jonathan and Amy Harris's uh, efforts to find those um, <laughs> whom you've drafted, those who preach the gospel on the streets to all who would hear, all who would listen, and that you would set your mark upon some and that you would set your, park, your mark upon many and draw them unto yourself in a saving way. We thank you so much for keeping your word and that we see that your judgment and your justice began at the house of the Lord. It, it started with those who proclaim religiosity, those who say I am, or at least they might verbalize it, but they say it in their, in their, in their minds that I am religious. I am a Christian. I keep the, the law of God. I am known by my affiliation with the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a Christian. I am part of Yahweh. I am with the God of the Bible, whatever, however we say it, however we say it, but we identify with you and that we would live it. That would not, it would not just be empty words, but that we would live it, that we would be men and women of action, that we would be about living the gospel and um, preaching the gospel and, and glorifying you. Back to Jonathan and Amy, Lord, I pray that you would please continue to give them boldness and wisdom while they're, while they're preaching in the streets and uh, that you would give them inroads into this community there in Grangetown, Cardiff with Grace Church and that partnership would blossom into the fruit of salvation and of course also the, the, the fruit of the spirit. We'd like to see not only numerical growth but spiritual growth amongst the converts and, and the people that are there. That you would please bless this uh, community service project with uh, our offering lunch to people that they would come, that they would have their bellies filled and their hearts filled as well that their hearts would be filled with love and that they would hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what we want to go far and wide. We want the good news that we are sinners and we are in need of a savior and such a savior exists 
We want that to go far and wide through um, Jonathan and Amy's work in our own lives. Um, that's what we want. That's what we want. We want to preach the gospel. We want to live the gospel. We want to obey. And we want the Lord Jesus Christ to be made much of. And that's in whose name we pray and um, ask all these things, Lord. Amen. All right, y'all. Show notes, notmanynoble.com. Emails, notmanynoble at gmail.com. If you want to hit me up. Thank you so much for listening. And I will holla at y'all tomorrow. Peace.